I told the story Saturday night of a friend giving me Ram Dass's book back in the, I guess it was in the 70s then, and how my life changed. And I thought, well, if you just read Ram Dass's book, everything works out perfectly, you know. And discovered, no, no, you have to go through the lessons. You have to learn what you came to planet Earth to learn. So, hmm, yes. Why are, do we have amnesia from all the lessons we've learned in past lives? <laughs> That's, that's a good question. Why do we have amnesia from all the lessons we've learned in past lives? Because we defend our old belief systems. The ego will defend everything it knows, all that it believes is right and wrong. How are you going to shift that? We know we have to release that old belief system in order to take on the new belief system that everything is love. So if you come in hanging on to the old belief system, it's a much tougher journey, right? <clears throat> now, when you come in, <clears throat> it's not random. Nothing's random or accidental. You picked your parents. You know, you picked your family. You picked your environment you were coming into because you needed to have those experiences to become the teacher you were going to become. So in a sense, you came in with amnesia, but in another sense, you came in with folks who were gonna teach you the same old thing again, <laughs> right? They were gonna teach you right and wrong and how to do life and do it my way and behave. You, know, you must behave and you've got to uh, do everything I tell you to do and do it right now and, you know, grow up and be responsible, all of that stuff. So, yeah, we came in with amnesia, but we still get trapped in the same thing. Go back to your life before and you had the same beliefs. How'd that happen? Well, I picked the same parents. <laughs> you know, whatever uh, you might have there. You know, there's a reason we came here. So, well, hey, I, I must be, uh, I chose to come here. I looked at the options I had available and yet I still came here. Therefore, I've got something to do. I need to be in the world. But not of the world, to me, means do it a different way. <clears throat> do it spirit's way instead of doing it the ego's way. As long as you find yourself still in a body on planet Earth, there must be a reason that you're still in a body on planet Earth. Okay? Which means you have more to do, you have more to learn, you have more to experience or something. So don't push that away. Just transform it. Approach it from a spiritual perspective instead of from this is reality. The average person lives a reactive life. They don't choose their thoughts. They let what's in their face choose their thoughts for them. Right? And they battle everything. They react to everything they hear and say and see and feel, you know. And you're, you're not in charge of your own life if you're just reacting, you know. You let the outer environment control you. Now, of course, you picked the outer environment, but still, yeah. Actually, I was at a workshop one time, and a woman came up to me and said, I've been trying to get my husband to understand this sort of thing. And he just doesn't seem to be interested. And she said, so I, 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 I kind of trapped him. He was refinishing the kitchen floor. And, you know, he uh, finished part of it and he couldn't walk on that until it dried. So there was only one way out of the room. So I put a table there. And I put my tape recorder there and I started playing one of your talks. I just gonna force him to listen to this, right? And after the talk was over, he said to her, I've been telling you that for 20 years. <laughs> so sometimes we're so, so tune out our partners 
that we don't hear what they have to say to us. After the Saturday night talk, a woman and her husband came up to me and she was, well, I'm trying to figure out this. I'm trying to understand this part. Or she had some specific thing she was looking for. And her husband standing right behind her. And I said, he's been explaining that to you forever. And he went, thank you. <laughs> and she said, oh, maybe I should listen to him. You know, we partners are, we have preconceived boundaries that we set up with them. They come at it from male or female, masculine or feminine, which is different than ours. And so we say that's different. That's not the same thing. But it may be the same thing. Yeah. So the male and female is in both of us. So we're neither feminine nor masculine. We're both. And they think different. They get insights differently. They receive information differently. But it's all good stuff. Just know that whatever you're experiencing at the moment is the most perfect thing you could be experiencing for you to take the next step on your path. There are no mistakes. Whether you're hearing something that makes you feel blissful or something that challenges your belief system, if it's happening to you right now, it is the most perfect thing that could be happening to you right now for you to take your next step. I had a wonderful spiritual teacher, and she used to say, I'm always in my divine right place. Absolutely. Everybody's in their divine right place. The universe does not waste one second of time. If you ever want to know, what should I be learning now? Just stop and say, where am I? What's happening to me now? What's around me now? What am I hearing? What am I seeing? It's perfect. School, not one second wasted. Okay. Well, I know you guys are really, have fabulous energy. I want to see somebody in the chairs. Anybody want to? I sat in it for a while. Good, good. Excellent. What did you experience? Um, just a little peace, I think. A little um. peace. That's the goal. Thank you. And if anybody does hands-on type healing, feel free. Go right over there and, and, and do whatever you do. Okay. Well, what next? Um, I like to do a lot of inner work, communicating with our inner self. And you know, I, I get my guidance in a certain way. You get your guidance in a certain way. We're all intuitive. You know, it's that paradox. We're all the same, but we're all unique. So we do things, all do things a little differently. But I have some little guided meditations that I like to do that just kind of, for me, that's very powerful stuff. I uh, learned about, well, I learned about meditation. I learned about going in and getting information when I took a class. I took a class called Silva Mind Control. Today it's called the Silva Method, but it's the same class. It's a, a class that was created by Jose Silva, uh, who had some amazing number of children, like 13 children or something. And he was trying to help them uh, in school, help them be good learners. And so he developed a course to use your mind better. Um, I don't know where he got his guidance to create this, but to him, using your mind better meant going in and listening to spirit. 
so I took this course. And the way that the Silva uh, Institute teaches this, they, they get instructors. But the instructors are allowed to make up the course as they go. There are 20 guided meditations which are the same in all, no matter who teaches the course. But the rest of the course is up to the instructor, and the instructor might be a business person. So they're teaching the course as to how to do better in business. Or they might be uh, you know, uh, uh, into healing or something. Or they might be into uh, uh, psychological awareness or something. There's just many, many different forms. So if you just sign up for a Silva class, you don't know what you're getting. Uh, but you can call them and say, uh, which teacher is metaphysically based. So I had a teacher, uh, just pure luck it was, who was totally into the metaphysical. There's no luck, you know that. Um, and I uh, liked the way she taught the course, and you can repeat the course just for what they call a chair charge, 10 bucks or something. Uh, to repeat it. So I took the course uh, seven times from her, and then I took five graduate courses. And at that time, all the graduate instructors were metaphysically oriented. Um, it, it was, to me, where I was introduced to my guides. Uh, we had great conversations. They told me what they could teach me, what I could learn. Um, just had a ball. So I. When I do guided med meditations, they sound very much like Silva, <laughs> Silva uh, meditations, whatever. But uh, I, I enjoy those. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll do uh, one or two of those. Um, you guys can just be right there, OK? It's fun to see faces that turn to bliss, isn't it? Wow. OK, an interesting thing when I'm in front of a group and I start some exercise or something by saying, find a comfortable position, and everybody moves. Why weren't they in a comfortable position to start with? <laughs> so anyway. Um, and you can do this any way you like, whatever works best for you, eyes open, eyes closed. Um, you can open your eyes at any time if you have your eyes closed and you're not real comfortable or whatever. So let's start off by relaxing the body. Two or three kind of slow, deep breaths. <coughs> Roll your head around on your neck a little bit, gently, slowly. Relax your jaw. Let your jaw move from left to right. Scan your body and see where it is that you might be storing a little bit of tension. Just scan it from top to bottom. <clears throat> when you find a place that it feels like you're storing a little tension, speak gently to it and just ask it to relax for you. If it still feels a little bit tight, then use your muscles and tighten it as tight as you can. Squeeze it, tighten it. And then relax. Let the tension just flow out of it. Mm. 
our inner senses are more expansive than our physical body senses. We still have the inner sense of sight and hearing and taste and feel and smell. But they can go beyond what the outer senses can experience. What is your favorite flower? Imagine that your favorite flower, you're holding your flower, you're looking at your flower. Be aware of your inner sense of sight, how you can see the texture of the petals of the flower. You can see the texture of the leaves of the flower. You have an inner sense of smell. Hold your flower close to your nose in your mind's eye and take a deep breath. What is the smell of your flower? Is there any moisture, drops of dew on your flower? Your inner senses can go beyond the outer senses. You can become aware of the life that is in the flower. You can communicate with your flower. Take just a moment and ask your flower, what is your purpose in being here? Listen with your inner senses. You may hear a response. You may feel a response. You may get a telepathic response. The response will be in a way that is comfortable for you. What is your purpose in being here? Give thanks to your flower for being in your awareness, for communicating with you, for creating a connection with you. <clears throat> Now you can set your flower down somewhere out of your way for the moment and come back to your flower later. Now using your inner senses, imagine, make up, create in any way you want to create it, that you are standing on a path in bright sunlight a dirt path. You can feel the sunshine beaming down. It is a warm day. You are aware of the sunlight, aware of the path, aware of your body. Is there grass beside your path? Are there flowers around? Are there clouds in the sky created any way that you desire it to be? <clears throat> now reach down and take off your shoes and socks. 
so that your bare feet are in contact with the dirt path. It is a warm path. Move your feet around on the path. Feel the dirt, feel the warmth. Warm sun, very pleasant day. Take a deep breath. Slowly begin to walk along your path, observing everything that's around. <clears throat> Create it any way you would like for it to be. <clears throat> Ahead of you is a forest, and your path goes into the forest, into the trees. Walk slowly into the forest. It is cooler in the forest. Feel the coolness. The earth beneath your feet is cooler. The sunlight is filtering down through the trees, making patterns of light and dark. Do you have animals in your forest. What kind of animals do you have in your forest? Are there birds? What songs are the birds singing? Pick out a tree that is appealing to you, a tree that you would like to get to know. Walk up to where you can touch your tree. You can feel the life energy in the tree. You can feel that the tree has a purpose in being. The tree has a mission in life, just as you have. Ask your tree what its purpose in being here is. Be aware of how you receive the answer, audibly or telepathically or just as a feeling or a sensing or a knowing. It will be your own way of receiving information. You know more about the purpose of trees now. If there is an animal that attracts your attention, ask it what its purpose in life is. And be aware of how you receive the answer. Give thanks to the tree, give thanks to the animal. Return to your path. Feel the dirt beneath your feet. Feel the coolness of the forest. 
See the patterns of light and dark as the sun filters through the trees. Walk slowly along your path. Ahead of you, you will see there is a clearing. The clearing has beautiful green grass. Walk slowly into the clearing. Feel the grass beneath your feet. Feel the warmth of the sun again. Pleasantly warm in your clearing. Take a moment and explore your clearing. Look around and see what you see. Look at the sky, see if there are any clouds. Can you hear the sounds of birds or animals? Is there a breeze? In the center of your clearing now, you notice a bench, a very comfortable looking park bench. Walk to the bench, feeling the grass beneath your feet, the warmth of the sunshine, This is a magnificent clearing, beautiful grass, trees all around. Sit on your bench and enjoy for just a moment. As you look back to the path that you came into the clearing on, you can see that there is somebody else approaching your clearing, walking down the path. You get a very good feeling about this person. They radiate a warmth. They're approaching the clearing. They're coming to the edge of the clearing. As they walk into the clearing in the grass, you can see that their aura is almost visible, or it may be visible. They radiate love and light. Speak to this person. Invite them to sit on your bench next to you. Feel their energy. This is one of your guides, one of your guardians, one of your helpers who has come to convey some information to you. As you enjoy their energy, their warmth, their radiance, Ask them if there is something that they would like to tell you or convey to you in some way. Now take a moment and receive. Listen, feel, intuit, however you receive information. There is a message that is just for you from your guidance. Listen and receive.
If you have a question you would like to ask this guide, ask that question now and then listen and receive. This guide is always available to you, always there for you to ask questions of or receive information from. All you need do to communicate with this guide is close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine that you are back on this park bench and your guide will be with you. Give thanks to your guide. Stand and embrace your guide. Now you and your guide together Walk across the clearing, feeling the grass in your feet, the warmth of the sunshine, back to the path. You and your guide together, walking slowly, enter the forest again, feel the coolness Reacquaint yourself with your friends, the animals and the trees. Walk slowly through your forest, feeling the path, feeling the energy of the forest hearing the sounds of the birds and the animals, back to where your path entered the forest. As you step out of the forest onto the path, you feel the warm sun again, the brightness of the sun. Have the clouds in the sky changed? You and your guide together will never be separated. Always with you. When you think about your guide, your guide is with you. When you are busy with the tasks of the world, your guide is still with you. Always available. Go back to where you left your shoes. If you had socks, put your socks back on, put your shoes back on. Take a deep breath, feel the warm air, bright sunshine. Locate the flower that you left there. <clears throat> Pick up your flower.
In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three. When I reach the number three, you will return to the outer conscious level. Be wide awake and alert, remembering vividly every experience you have had here. <clears throat> Bringing with you your flower and your guide to the outer conscious level. One, come out slowly now, returning to the outer conscious level. Two, take a deep breath, returning fully alert, wide awake, relaxed as if you had had eight hours of peaceful, restful sleep. Three, Eyes open, wide awake and alert, feeling relaxed and comfortable. 